when people come in what do they hear what do they see what do they smell what do they taste and what do they feel It's hosting season. Get your wine list ready and your playlist ready because it is hosting season. I love to host at my house. Since I moved in, I've had at least five or six gatherings in one year. So like every other month, I'm hosting something. It is hosting season officially. We've got Thanksgiving, we've got Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day, or for some, Galentine's Day. And this is the season to gather. So I'm gonna give you my top 10 hosting tips and maybe it'll make your hosting season that much more enjoyable and a little easier in my opinion. So here they are, let's jump into it. This is my number one thing that I do no matter what event I'm hosting, this I think is the backbone of a lot of parties. I wouldn't say the backbone, but it definitely makes a statement. And that is tablescapes. The presentation of your food and your drinks is major priority for me, at least top three. That's why I put it number one. Now I do have a tablescapes how-to video that I did last year during Thanksgiving, and I'll make sure to link that video below. But in the meantime, let me just give you a brief overview. When you are displaying your food, you want to create layers that is really going to just draw the eye and make it feel like grand and elegant. You wanna get little things to stack your food. I'm also gonna link a few of my favorites from Amazon below, uh, but you definitely wanna find a way to create layers. I have these little stackable glass trays that I use. I have a cake stand that I like to sometimes display my drinks on. I'll put all of my drinks up at the top and then I'll layer some down at the bottom. I also have a lot of serving trays and at least two of my serving trays are ascending so there's two or three layers of food display it just makes everything look very polished and professional and creates this like you know this feels good in here it feels good in here you know it's a, it's a vibe it creates a really nice nice look to your food when you're serving to your guests Another thing I like to do with my tablescapes is label my food. This is something I'm always doing like five minutes before guests show up. I'm like hurrying and writing really quick with my marker. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody just calm down. Label the food just so people know what it is. It's that final little extra touch that just makes it that much more nice. It's not required or necessary. I mean, none of this is, but it does add that extra touch and it makes your space look much more elegant and professional. Another tip when you're doing your tablescapes is to add candles. You wanna add candles and sprinkle them throughout. Actually, before you add candles, you wanna put foliage down. So find some kind of foliage. I don't do this every time. I mainly use foliage when I'm doing like a holiday event and not just like a game night or something like that, but even with a game night i'll maybe put some flowers down or just put like three little things of flowers like little mini bouquets throughout the food it just again it makes it look nice it makes it look professional why not go over the top like if you can't make everything feel like a big event or you know a re wedding reception why not why not do it you know why <laughs> life is short live it up have fun and i get everybody's on different budgets but you don't have to get the most expensive foliage you can like i said get like a little garland or get some little faux flowers from the dollar tree it's definitely gonna make your um tablescape look a lot cuter you can also find some on amazon if i can find some i'll link some below but you have options basically you have options also for tablescapes, you wanna put candles down. This is a very affordable way to just elevate your tablescape. The candles are gonna create a romantic vibe with your food. Just get like a glass cylinder and then put a candle inside of that. 
you can also get little tea lights tea lights are a really good option for putting candles throughout your food because they're small they don't really get in the way of the food but they still create that romance so create a budget and try your hardest to stick to your budget you don't want to go broke um hosting you know like set a budget say okay i don't want to spend any more than 200 dollars on this entire event or 100 dollars or 50 dollars, and try to stick to that you can really get creative with a lot of these tips that i'm giving you to stay within the budget but i just say do that so you don't regret spending all this money on something that yeah the memories are long lasting but at the end of the night everybody goes home and then your bank account is the one that suffers in the end so just try to stick to a budget and there's a few ways you can do that one way is a potluck you can have people bring different food options so that you're not providing the finances for all the food for all your guests especially if it's like a party of like you know 10 20 30 40 people you want some other people to pitch in another option is bring your own bottle you could also be like hey I'll provide the food but why don't you guys bring your own liquor? You could also go with cheaper meals like nachos or little small finger foods, a baked mac and cheese. You can take a big, big one pot meals like a mac and cheese and cut it up into like fours and then serve them in little serving dishes, stuff like that. Cheap things that you can make in bulk, like think about those kinds of dishes so you can save on cash. One of my favorite ways actually is to do a brunch. Breakfast stuff is super cheap and everybody loves breakfast. Keep in mind like keeping food hot, you know, especially like breakfast, but that is a really affordable way. If you wanted to host something but didn't want to spend a bunch of money, consider doing a brunch or some kind of breakfast meal for your guests. So now I'm just gonna tell you guys about a few of my favorite serving dishes. Number one are these glass Ikea water containers. Well, I use them for water. They're really like little bottles that you can serve at parties or whatever. Um, but I like to use them for water. So I will like fill it up with some of my uh, spring water from my dispenser. And I'll just fill that all the way up so people aren't constantly going back and forth to the dispenser. They just have this one bottle that they can use for water and I love it because it looks sleek and it's really practical and convenient for the guests. Another favorite of mine is this three tier serving dish. I use this at literally every single hosting party that I have. If you get this you will not regret it. It looks so good displayed on your tablescape and it's just really easy for people to just grab and go what they need and the best part is it's so easy to clean. The place you just lift up, wash the plates, dry them and then everything is collapsible so you can take apart the holder like the metal holder and then collapse it down and store it away get this guys it's so good i mean the hosting season is coming up you don't want to miss out on this it's so so good i recommend it if you are thinking about hosting something at your place number three is this ikea drink dispenser this is so cute i use it again at every single party and it's really good if you wanted to make like a big mixed drink like let's say you didn't want to make a bunch of different cocktails and you didn't want to keep making cocktails all night you could make one giant cocktail it looks really good but it's also really functional and it just adds to whatever kind of tablescape that you're doing another is this chilled condiment tray this is really good for making drinks so if you wanted to set up like a little cocktail bar so your guests can make their own guests you can cut up some limes some fruit um, serve it over ice and then maybe some mint and you know just have that there so your guests can make their own cocktail it also doubles as like a little activity for your guests so number four is kind of a hodgepodge of tips leading to one overall tip which is create a vibe in your home you want to tap into the senses like if you want to know how to create a vibe in your home i feel like i can make a whole video just about this alone but tap into the senses like when people come in what do they hear what do they see what do they smell what do they taste and what do they feel Ooh, this is nice girl what do they feel is it super cold? Is it super hot? Are they? Are your guests sweating, looking like dabbing themselves off? 
think about that set a nice cool temperature people are going to be up moving around maybe drinking talking so you know maybe have it a little bit cooler um, also maybe have some like blankets or something if maybe you have a guest who's slightly colder think about those things and how you can make your guests comfortable what do you smell when you walk in are you smelling some like ham or something cooking in the stove or in the oven um maybe some bath and body works candles that's what i love to smell i love to smell that you guys know that's my jam so what are they seeing are you like running around like a maniac with your head cut off because you're trying to like get everything done last minute we gotta clean the house now 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 people i want this place looking like disney on ice in one minute harry if you haven't made your bed throw it away it's too late to make it now company is coming get rid of the couches we can't let people know we sit or is it kind of calm is it kind of calm is it clean is your tablescape on point you know is it dusty or is it nice and clean tidy and presented well what do you hear you know are you playing music you definitely want to have music playing as soon as your guests come into the house i love 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 to put on a youtube dj there's so many djs on youtube where they're like djing like live parties and it's like you got a dj for free at your own party um you just hook it up to the bluetooth and every once in a while people will glance over at the dj and it's pretty cool it's a cool experience taste obviously is the food good <laughs> you definitely want some good food or they can taste that welcome drink right when they come in the door okay so that's just the senses <laughs> You can also create a vibe with your lighting. You definitely want warm lighting throughout the house. Don't turn on your overhead lights. Find all the extra lighting and practical lights that you can use around your house. This is one that I know you're all stressing about and that's your food options. Your food's gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> For food, I love to do one pot meals. I think one pot meals for a party are just like genius. Okay, I'm talking about gumbo. That's my go-to. I'm talking about jambalaya, mac and cheese, lasagna, like those big pot meals that you can just cut it up and put it in everybody's plate and it's good, it's filling and you get it all done. I would also say to reach out to your guest and see if there's any allergies and have some options for people who have um, a food allergy or might be vegan, you know, have something for them to eat and don't like forget them completely. I know some people subscribe to the idea that, well, those people should eat before they get there, but you know, you're hosting them. So keep them in mind. I don't expect you to make like a whole four course meal for them, but at least something that they can snack on, even if it's just some like cut up fruit on the side so that they can eat something. One thing that I like to have at every party is a charcuterie board. It's super affordable to do and it's just something good that they can nibble on throughout the party even after the main course is done and even though and this is not just for dinner parties i'm just, just like any party i think you should have like a main food option that's just me and then other little snacks afterwards for when they're done with that um, also for food i recommend items that you can just hold with your hand people are walking around they're talking socializing drinking you want to have like handheld things that they can eat like wings or you know a shrimp skewer or something that they can just kind of hold and nibble on and that's easy to eat oh another food tip is you don't have to make everything fresh i don't know if that was obvious or not but i a lot of times with my desserts i'll buy those like already made and just you know set it up make it look nice you don't have to cook everything you know maybe cook one or two things and everything else you can buy and just make it look pretty set it up and make it look nice people don't care as long as it tastes good so that that's the last tip i have about food number six you want to time out everything if you can prep a day or two before please do that <laughs> you will regret it if you wait until the day of to do your shopping I don't even do that anymore okay I'm, I'm too seasoned i don't even do that anymore i know better i do all my shopping the day before if it's something that needs to be frozen i'll freeze it but there's no way i'm gonna do it the day of like that is just literally asking for a panic attack okay i can't breathe <laughs> 
time your food out time your guest arrival your music like your candles you don't want to light your candles so early that they're out by the time your guests get there so just keep timing in mind and make sure that you're on schedule for everything number seven you want to have games and activities for your guests so think of things that are you know easy to set up but fun maybe a photo booth wall for your guests one thing that i do for all my guests is i take a polaroid with them if it's their first time coming over i'll take a photo and at almost every event i do take a polaroid i i wish i had more of my hosting stuff to show you guys but i just don't i'm pretty in the moment when i'm hosting i'm not recording everything so unless my guests have recorded something or there was once when I was trying to do a hosting video, y'all, I try to do a hosting video almost every time I host <laughs> and I'm so busy trying to run and get everything together. It never comes out like you don't know how long I was trying to do a hosting video for you guys, but you know what? It doesn't matter because it's hosting season now. So what better time? But anyway, yeah, you want to have stuff for them to do, have some games laid out for them. Um, maybe put some music videos on the TV and just kind of keep the volume down if that's not the music you're listening to, but if you want like a visual for them to see. Uh, so just little things like that. If you have any game ideas or activity ideas, put them in the comments. Let's take a quick break because I want to tell you guys about our 2K challenge. I am going to consider posting twice a week up until the new year. I really want us to get to 2000 subscribers by the new year. So we have a little over a month, about a month and a half to get there. And I know we can do it. So just make sure you subscribe so you could be a lucky winner of a virtual makeover. I'm going to give three lucky subscribers a virtual room makeover where I decorate your whole room for free and you could be anywhere in the world. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's go on to number eight. Number eight, pretty simple, but try to get some help if you can. If you have a BFF, your sister, mom, husband, boyfriend, get somebody who can help you if you can or even a guest pick your favorite guest and say one that you don't care about like impressing that much one who's probably seen you poop just be like hey can you come over early because i would love your help and it'll help you and your sanity during the party so that you have everything done and then you yourself can enjoy the party so you're not still setting up later that's all so number nine i highly recommend setting up a bar for your guests People kind of like to make their own drinks because they have different tolerances. So setting up a little bar area gives them that autonomy over their own drink. And, you know, they can say, hey, I want just one shot or I want three. I'm ready to turn up. <laughs> I love any kind of bar for two reasons. One, you're not constantly making cocktails throughout the day. And it's interactive, right? Yes, and right. It also, like, this is decor. Like, I, if you walk into a party, like, it looks beautiful. So, um, I like that. <laughs> yeah, and it, this is exactly what we were talking about. Yeah. If you have a signature cocktail, all you mm -hmm. have to do is soft drinks and that one cocktail. Totally, and I think it's always a nice to provide a non-alcoholic option for people. Of course. Not everybody wants Not everybody wants yeah, to I want the margarita, but not everybody. <laughs> yeah, not everybody wants it loaded. Yeah. yeah. I think if you've got the margarita down, you can customize the margarita, change it up in a bunch of ways so that you can entertain like 10 different times. Nobody realizes that you get, you're basically giving them the same drink every time with a different kind of you're juice. twisting it up. Just a little twist. So They can spruce it up how they like, and it's nice. They can make it custom to what they like, and then it also is a little bit of an activity for them to do. So just have some mint some you know some cherries maybe a little grenadine a few one or two different alcohol options one or two different chaser options you can even put a stack of cups there where they can label their cup um, i'm gonna link one in the comments below actually yeah just make it like a whole little station make it a little cute cute little area and i think it'll add to your event a lot and number 10 which i've talked about multiple times in this video but relax relax and enjoy your party because it's your party it's for you it's yes for your guests but it's for you so you want to be in the party try to resist the urge of serving your guests the whole time this is definitely something that i fall trapped to constantly being up constantly giving people drinks and you know you would think i'm the wait staff <laughs> i i think it's really important to create some balance and 
find opportunities where they can serve themselves, like the bar. Be a part of the memory. Be a part of the party. Um, and that's that's all. I hope you guys have a really good holiday season. There's so many events coming up. And even if you are watching this outside of the holiday season, this is all year round hosting advice. So I hope you found something. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'm really good at responding to comments. So if you have any questions about anything I said, let me know. Otherwise, I love you all so much. I really do. I really do. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. You got me shaking. Yeah, I feel